প্রোগ্রামে এই একসাথে করা হয়নি কারণ আমরা জানি অনেকে ব্যস্ত থাকে প্রত্যেকদিন এক ঘন্টা করে আমরা করব এই কয়েকদিন 13 সেপ্টেম্বর আজকে থেকে 11 সেপ্টেম্বর পর্যন্ত প্রতিদিন এক ঘন্টা তিন থেকে চারটা এবং যে সমস্ত কনটেন্ট আমরা কভার করব সেটা খুব বেসিক কনটেন্ট থেকে এর মধ্যে আপনাদের যারা অলরেডি অভিজ্ঞ তাদের কষ্ট করে একটু শুনতে হবে আমরা আস্তে আস্তে হয়তো ভিতরের দিকে যাব সামনের লেকচারগুলোতে পার্টিকুলারলি আজকে এটা খুব সিম্পলি হবে জাস্ট এনকারেজ করেন আমাদের কারণ আমি জানি যে এখানে বেশিরভাগই হচ্ছে পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট ছাত্র এবং পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট ছাত্রের কাজ অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ এই যে কোনো ইউনিভার্সিটির জন্য আমরা পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট ছাত্রদের সাহায্য করতে চাই এনকারেজ করতে চাই হেল্প করতে চাই যাতে তারা এই তাদের রিসার্চের মাধ্যমে বেস্ট আউটপুট তৈরি করতে পারে তো এটা একটা সেটার এফোর্ট সো প্রথমে আমরা হিস্ট্রি অফ সায়েন্টিফিক রাইটিং সম্পর্কে আলোচনা করবো কিছু জেনারেল টিপস এই জিনিস হচ্ছে আজকের বিষয় এরপর আমরা আস্তে আস্তে আর একটু ভিতরে ঢুকবো আগামী ক্লাসে আমরা জানবো জার্নাল ইম্প্যাক্ট ফ্যাক্টর সম্পর্কে আমরা জানি যে ইম্প্যাক্ট ফ্যাক্টর একটা চারিদিকে সবাই আলোচনা করে এবং কি এই জিনিসটা যারা জানেন না তাদের জন্য আমরা আলোচনা করব তারপর জানালে ক্যাটাগরি কিভাবে থাকে এইচ ইন্ডেক্স বলতে কি বোঝায় এই ধরনের জিনিস আজকাল খুবই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ রিসার্চারদের জন্য জানা এরপর আমরা সাধারণ একটা রিসার্চ পেপারে কি ধরনের ফরম্যাট থাকে সিম্পল ফরম্যাট সেগুলা আমরা দেখব তারপর ডিটেলস এ যাবো কন্টেন্ট অ্যানালিসিস আমরা জানি যে সবচেয়ে জেনারেল যে অ্যাকসেপ্টেবল ফরম্যাট তার মধ্যে আছে টাইটেল অ্যাবস্ট্রাক্ট ইন্ট্রোডাকশন মেথোডোলজি রেজাল্ট ডিসকাশন কনক্লুশন ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি একটা একটা করে আমরা আলোচনা যাব সম্ভবত দুই দিন ব্যয় করবো এই ডিটেল কন্টেন্ট অ্যানালিসিসে তারপর আমরা দেখবো যে কিভাবে একটা জার্নালে সাবমিট করা যায় যাতে করে কম সময়ে আমরা আমাদের যে মনোনীত জার্নাল আছে সেটা পাবলিশ করতে পারি এরপর আমরা দেখব কিছু প্রি ডেটারি জার্নাল আজকাল জানবেন যে অনেক ভুয়া জার্নাল আছে যেটা ইমেলের মাধ্যমে আপনাদের কাছে সব জিনিসপত্র পাঠাবে খুব অ্যাট্রাক্টিভ ওয়েতে কিন্তু আমাদের এই ধরনের জার্নাল সবসময় অ্যাভয়েড করতে হবে সে সম্পর্কে কিছু আলোচনা জার্নালের পাঠালে ম্যানাস্ক্রিপ্ট এক সাথে সাথে অ্যাকসেপ্টেড হবে সেটা না এর মধ্যে অনেক ধরনের ইম্প্রুভ করার সুযোগ থাকে এবং যারা রিভিউ করেন তারা এই ইম্প্রুভ করার জন্য বিভিন্ন ধরনের সাজেশন দেন এবং তাদেরকে কনভিন করার মাধ্যমেই আমরা অ্যাকসেপ্টেন্স পেতে পারি এবং তাদের কিভাবে কনভিন্স করব তাদেরকে কিভাবে ডিল করা যায় সেটা হচ্ছে আমাদের আরেকটা লেকচার জার্নাল পাবলিকেশনের জন্য এই এথিক্যাল ইস্যু ইনফ্যাক্ট রিসার্চার হিসাবে আমাদের এথিক্স অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ তো সেই জিনিসটা সম্পর্কে আমরা একদিন কাটাবো এবং ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজও আমরা জানি যে ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ স্কিল ভালো ছাড়া আমরা ভালো সায়েন্টিস্ট ভালো রিসার্চার হতে পারবো এটা সম্পর্কে আমরা জাস্ট একটু ইম্পর্টেন্সটা জানা সেই জিনিসটা আমরা সেই দিন দেব সম্ভবত আমি এথিক্যাল ইস্যুজ এবং ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ হয়তো একটা লেকচারের মধ্যেই আনতে পারবো আমার এত কথা শোনার পরে হয়তো আপনাদের বোর্ড ফিল করবেন সেই কারণে আমরা যেটা করতে চাই যে একদিন আমরা আমাদের টিচার যারা আছেন সবাইকে নিয়ে বসবো এবং ওনারা সবাই যার যার ফিল্ডে স্বনামধন্য এবং অনেক পাবলিকেশন করেছেন ভালো ভালো জানলে তাদের ব্যক্তিগত যে অভিজ্ঞতা আছে সেটা আমাদের কাজে লাগবে তা আমরা সেটা শোনার চেষ্টা করবো এবং কোয়েশ্চেন অ্যান্সার থাকবে এই ওই সেশনে এই হচ্ছে মোটামুটি আউটলাইন তিন থেকে এগারো সেপ্টেম্বর ইনফ্যাক্ট তিন থেকে সাতই সেপ্টেম্বর একটা না চলবে তারপর দুই দিন বন্ধ দশ থেকে এগারো আমরা আবার আসব আর বারোই সেপ্টেম্বর হচ্ছে আমাদের শেষ দিন তো এই হচ্ছে আমাদের ওভারঅল এই প্রোগ্রামটার কন্টেন্ট এবং এই কন্টেন্টের সময় আমরা যেটা থাকবে কিছু লেকচার থাকবে অবভিয়াসলি লেকচারের সাথে আমি কিছুটা ইন্টারাক্টিভ করার চেষ্টা করব যদিও অনলাইনে অতটা করা সম্ভব না যতটা আমরা চাই দেখা যাক কিছু কিছু স্টাডিজ মাঝে মাঝে আনব যাতে জিনিসটা অ্যাবস্ট্রাক না হয় একটু কংক্রিট আইডিয়া যাতে পাওয়া যায় আর প্রুফ ডিসকাশন নর্মালি আমি করে থাকি যদি 
ফিজিক্যাল লেকচার হতো কিন্তু আজকে এই অনলাইনে পাবো কিনা জানি না তবে কিছু অ্যাক্টিভিটিস হতো আমাদের থাকবে সেটা আমরা করবো এবং এক্সপিরিয়েন্স শেয়ারিং তো আছে শেষের দিকে এই হচ্ছে আমাদের যাত্রা যদি আমরা যাই আমাদের প্রথম লেকচারে সেই লেকচারটা হচ্ছে ইন্ট্রোডাকশন যদি কারো কোনো প্রশ্ন থাকে তাহলে যদি অপেক্ষা করতে না চান শেষ পর্যন্ত তাহলে প্রশ্ন করতে পারেন সংক্ষিপ্ত হলে আমি উত্তর দিব সংক্ষিপ্ত না হলে আমি বলবো যে শেষের দিকে আমরা আলোচনা এবং আমি এখন যদিও বাংলার সবচেয়ে স্বাচ্ছন্দ্য ফিল করি কিন্তু এখন থেকে বাংলা আর বলবো না এই কারণে যে আমাদের জন্য ইংরেজি জানা অত্যন্ত গুরুত্বপূর্ণ আমাদের পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট ছাত্র হিসাবে বা ইঞ্জিনিয়ার হিসাবে প্রফেশনাল হিসাবে এই ইঞ্জিনিয়ার এই ইংলিশ ঠিক মতো জানা না জানার কারণে আমাদের দেশের অনেক চাকরি হাতছাড়া হয়ে যাচ্ছে বিদেশে এসে জয়েন করে এইটা আমি এমফোসাইজ করার জন্য এই এখন থেকে ইংরেজিতে আলোচনা করি এবং আমিও ইংরেজিতে এক্সপার্ট তা না ইংরেজি তো আমার সেকেন্ড ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ যদি ইংরেজি অসুবিধা হয় তা আমাকে বলবেন যদি খুব তাড়াতাড়ি বলি আমি so these are the references that i observe there are many many references that you can find online uh, without any cost so here are some examples if you feel uh, you can consult those and of course i acknowledge each and all of them so the first question that arises why should we write scientific papers in a university as an academic or a postgraduate students there are a few things that we carry out so number one is we transfer knowledge through teaching number two is we have to create new knowledge and that we do through research and as postgraduate students of this university you belong to this group so you create new knowledge so you are a very important part of this university and of course the third uh, thing that we do in the university is we provide services to community and society now the second thing creation of knowledge new knowledge is the main point that we will make in this series of lectures I think I will skip this one. Now, uh, the question arises, uh, particularly those who uh, just got admitted or new to, to these postgraduate programs, what is research? In short, research is a systematic process where we collect and analyze information. And the purpose of this activity is to increase our understanding or increase our knowledge or create new knowledge so that is the purpose of research and as a researcher we are the active actor we create the knowledge to contribute to the understanding of a phenomenon so that is what we do but that is not sufficient just creating knowledge is not sufficient we have to communicate this knowledge and we will look into this how we communicate now when you do your research as a graduate student what you do is you create knowledge and you contribute to the sea of knowledge that humankind has created over hundreds of thousands of years and if you compare this as the sea then your job will be to add a drop knowledge to the sea although it may seem a small thing but this is very critical without this knowledge human kind will not grow in knowledge so you while doing your postgraduate university education in a university you create new knowledge you 
contribute to the body of knowledge which will be there for years to come. So humanity will use that knowledge in different ways. So you as a researcher are a very, very important group of professionals. So as I mentioned, we contribute to the understanding, but that is not sufficient. We have to communicate this because if we create knowledge and keep it in our pocket, then that knowledge doesn't exist. So we have to make sure that we put them in record. And there are a few ways we do that. So one is obviously you will write a thesis which will be collected and kept in the university. But this thesis may not be widely available to the scientific community. So that is why we have to publish scientific papers. And you probably uh, realize by now that in order to find your own research problem, you have to read a lot of papers written by others. So you owe a lot of debt to others that they have created this knowledge based on which you will be able to contribute new knowledge. And in turn, you have the responsibility now to create this new knowledge and record it in the form of research paper. Extremely important. And of course, you have to attend different conferences, scientific conferences and uh, seminars and explain what you have found, what you have discovered to your scientific community and learn from each other. So this is how we researchers communicate. And the topic of this program is all about this scientific research paper. And if we have opportunities, then we can discuss the other things at another time. At this stage, is, is my pace okay? Is it easy to understand or can somebody respond? Yes, sir. Okay, so I hear a very weak voice. Yes. I want to hear a louder voice. Can you hear me properly? Okay, okay, great, thank you. All right, so there are benefits when you publish your papers as an individual, you want to pursue an academic career or even as, uh, as an engineer in the future, uh, you can demonstrate your ability through your publication. So it's a measure of your scholarly achievement. It's a recognition and that recognition is not only at the national level, but also at the international level because research is a truly international activity. It's not just within the boundary of this country. Uh, it, the research that you are doing here, if you publish it in international journals, so it will go to the audience in the whole world. So anyway, it, it's a very, very noble thing that you are doing. When you publish your papers, it also demonstrates the progress that you are making in your own field. So it will be always easier to convince others about your development, about your success, about your progress, whether you want to go uh, to study in a, an, another university or you want to get a job, you want to get, get a PhD position or postdoc or whatever. So this always helps. So it goes both ways. It's not just uh, postgraduate students, the university also benefits a lot because through the work that you will be publishing, that university is spending so much resources and money and time, that will also gain, uh, bring benefit, a recognition for the department for the university. So it actually shows the status of a university and uh, through ranking of universities, uh, this is manifested, the publication that you will be making. 
through this publication, uh, the professors will also be able to bring new funding to create opportunities for more students like you, uh, to give them the opportunities to study uh, and also to finish their higher studies and go to the next level. So this is beneficial for the student, beneficial for the university as well. And if you are in the academia, you will hear very soon that if you do not publish, you cannot go up in the ladder. So there is a saying, they, they call it publish or perish. But this is, I find it too negative. And I found others who suggest this more positive statement. And I like this. So publish and flourish. So if you publish, you can flourish in your own uh, discipline, in your own uh, career. And indeed, uh, if you look at the wise men uh, in, this, in science, so you will see that how important it is. So if you do not publish, then your result doesn't exist. And Gerard Peel is a very famous publisher of the Scientific American, which is I think one of the oldest and most uh, popular scientific magazine. So he says, without publication, science is dead. And it is so true. If you don't publish, then your valuable work that you have done, nobody will be able to know that. So you have to publish. And indeed, the sea of knowledge that I showed you, those are all encoded in these scientific papers. And since the publication of the first scientific paper some 350 years ago, we as human beings have created more than 50 million research papers. So all our knowledge are recorded in these research papers. And of course, you will add your own contribution to this body of knowledge. So if you are not convinced that you have to publish, so look at this gentleman, Richard Feynman, and he's probably one of the finest physicists. And of course, he was a Nobel laureate. And he was a great teacher as well, classroom teacher. So he's telling that the research paper that you will be writing, it is not the description of your work, it is research itself. So paper writing is a process that is research, is a research process. So don't consider it as a part of your, uh, it's a part of your research. Don't consider it as post-research activity. On a bigger context, uh, the famous English philosopher, Sir Francis Bacon. So he tells us, it's old English, so don't worry about this. I think you can still understand. So reading makes a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. So writing, what he is emphasizing, is a very, very important skill. So when we read, we grow in knowledge, we become fuller. When we go and tell it to others in a conference, we are ready men. We are ready to communicate to others. But when it comes to writing, it's a very intense intellectual process. And there our communication becomes exact, becomes precise. So writing is a skill that all of us must develop as engineers, as researchers, as professionals. So that is what we would like to emphasize in this first talk. Now, scientific paper is a special form of writing. What constitutes a scientific paper? It's the published report of the original research that you have done. And emphasize this original research. And since this is original, this is an addition to our knowledge. This is not existing knowledge. And this is the first publication of the data that you have obtained. 
and we publish it in such a way that others can challenge it. Our peers, other academics, other researchers can repeat the experiment and confirm or contradict the So science is an open-ended endeavor. So this is how science grows. So others must be able to check and recheck the validity of our work. And through this scientific paper, this self-correcting nature of science uh, is manifested. And of course, the paper is published in journals which are readily available to the scientific community. So let us look at a brief history of scientific writing. Scientific writing is basically, uh, it started from the history of writing. And I will not go into the detail, just to tell you that uh, it started uh, with, with the writing that happened in prehistoric time. And uh, probably the Chinese were the first inventor of the movable type that created a lot of difference in, in the area of knowledge. And although the Chinese invented the movable type first, but uh, actually it was confined in China. So this gentleman by the name of Gutenberg, an inventor who first start, uh, discovered independently in Germany, this movable type, and that makes all the difference. And as a result of this invention, uh, the books were available to common mass. Before that, only the riches could have books for, which were mainly handwritten. And the first scientific paper was published. The scientific paper, as we know them, were published in 1665. Just as a side note, because I is one of my uh, most favorite inventor, uh, Johannes Gutenberg. So this very lowly, apparently very lowly invention. So that has got tremendous influence on uh, human civilization. So this invention, you can move the types and create whatever you want to create and publish them in mass quantities. So that was the thing that he made possible. And the thing is, once he has discovered this, then it spread throughout the whole world. And of course, initially the clergymen used this to publish uh, books uh, which are religious in nature, but later on, uh, all sorts of books were published. Anyway, so in Germany, there is a city called Mainz. So if you have a chance to go and visit, here's a very small museum. It's a very interesting, potentially, a uh, very, very influential museum. It's near Frankfurt. So please go and visit this, uh, this museum. Anyway, so coming back to scientific papers, it was in 1665 uh, when the first scientific paper was published, almost sim simultaneously, one in Paris, another one in London. And this one, which was published from Paris, uh, journal the Scovens. This was discontinued after a few tens of years. Uh, this ancient journal, Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society, it still exists. So it is being published almost continuously since 1665, March 1665. If you look at the early journals, uh, you will find the language a little bit informal. The first sort by me, so this was uh, published by Antony van Leeuwenhoek. So I think probably some of you know that uh, he discovered optical microscope. Uh, he's from Holland. And he wrote his research paper on this invention. Uh, and this is, uh, some part from it. What I wanted to show you is the way it was written at the beginning. And again, it's old English. So you will see that the letter shapes have changed. So this F-I-R 
ST. This, this is S actually. So in those early days, so this is F and this F without anything at the middle, this is actually S. So it reads the first sort by me discovered in the said water I diverse times observed to consist of its etc cetera, etc cetera. so you see the style he's describing things in a rather informal way i did this i found this and so on and so forth and later on it was found out this sort of uh, description of the work is not accurate enough to be included in scientific paper so people have started thinking about how to write scientific papers they found out the problem uh, that the reproducibility of scientific results were a huge problem when people write things in those informal ways so scientists now started putting a lot of efforts to write the methods section in a way so that others can repeat the methodology and repeat the experiments to find out its validity and so on. So this sort of refinement happens over years. And now the format that you see is simply this IMRAD format. So I stands for introduction, M for methods, results, and discussion. Although it may seem to you rather simple, are the trivial, but it actually took quite a number of years for scientists to find out this format. And this format is very consistent. If we express our scientific work in this format, there are less scope for confusion. So that is why we use it. And then Louis Pasteur, the famous chemist, so he started writing this uh, Imrite, uh, in this Imrite like uh, style in his famous book, Studies on Fermentation. And of course, he got Nobel Prize, you probably know. And following this, uh, journals also started using this format in, uh, after the 1940s. And in 1972, the American national standards. So they actually published a standard for writing scientific papers and they adopted this IMRAD format in that standard. So this is now universally accepted format for writing the paper. So in a typical paper, so you have this introduction, you have methods, you have results and discussion. In addition, so you have this Four material where you have the title, you have the abstract and keywords, and towards the end, of course, you have conclusion, you have other sections like acknowledgement, reference, and supplementary data. And the first section, title, abstract, and keywords, are important, particularly now when everything is recorded in digital form. So if we have accurate title, accurate abstract and keywords, then it's easier for the reader to find our papers. And of course it helps us as a writer, we want our papers uh, to be discovered by as many readers as possible and read by as many readers as possible. So when our title, abstract and keywords are accurate, then it draws a good number of readers we will read our paper, get benefit out of it, cite our papers, and this way the science, the cycle of science is open-ended process, self-correcting process continues. And to emphasize that in journal, the space is very, very important. So this is, I borrowed this slides from Elsevier. So they are telling us that if you can express things in n number of words, never use n plus one number. Just to emphasize how important it is to write precisely in scientific communication. So let's have a look at the anatomy of a scientific paper. 
when you write your scientific paper, the first draft, uh, the first form that you have, we call it a manuscript when it is not published yet. So the manuscript is the beginning. And we write manuscript usually in a format that is given by the publisher, by the journal. And normally the manuscripts are written in double spacing using a font size of about 10, uh, about 11 or 12. Now, when you use this double spacing and this font size of 11 or 12, then a typical full length paper will consist of about 25 to 30 pages. And we call them manuscript pages. And in the manuscript, we obviously have abstract, which will be about one paragraph. Then we have introduction, which is about one and a half to two manuscript pages. Then we have method, about two plus pages. We have results and discussion, about 10 to 12 manuscript pages. Then we have conclusion, about one to two manuscript pages. Typically, in a full length paper, we will have about six to eight figures, one to three tables, and about less than 50 citations. So of course, these are very rough numbers. It doesn't mean that it cannot be 65 or 60. So this is a rough guess, or it doesn't mean that it cannot be 19 references. So this is a typical full length paper. In addition to typical full length paper, we also publish another form, short form of papers, which are called letters or short communication. They have very strict limit on the length. In some journals, they will tell us that it cannot be more than 3000 words, or it may have a limit on the number of illustrations that we can include. So having this brief introduction to what a scientific paper is, uh, let's have some uh, common beginning, how we start. Before you prepare to write a paper, obviously you have done your experiments, you have analyzed your data, uh, once you have done that, that, you have to ask a few questions to yourself. The data that you have obtained, are these new and are these interesting? And the work that you have done, was it very easy? Anybody could have done this? Or was there some challenges and your design of experiments were critical, were complex, and it was an in-depth study. Is the topic that you are dealing with popular among researchers nowadays, or is it an obsolete topic? And have you been able to provide a solution to some difficult problems? So if you ask yourself this question, and if the answer is yes, in all cases, then you are in a very good position thinking about writing your paper. So you need to have some reflection on your own work that you have done before you begin writing the paper. And as I mentioned already, there are a few types of papers. One is full length papers, another is letter. The third part, a uh, third type is review papers. So review papers, are papers where you read a number of existing papers, published papers, and then you summarize them. Summarize them in a way that when others read it, they find it useful. They get a lot of information in one paper because you have distilled a lot of information from so many papers into one single paper. In early time, these review papers were only done by invitation. So editors, know who are the best researchers in your area. 
So they would invite from time to time senior researchers, asking them to review the advances that were made in the last few years. So it was a very exclusive sort of things. But nowadays, this is not the case. Since the review papers are popular and many researcher wants to read the review papers to know about the topic in a short space. So these are quite attractive. And when you publish review papers, many people read them. So it attracts a lot of citation. And as a result of this, nowadays, the editors, they actually like to consider review papers even from a young researcher like you. So you have the possibility to publish review papers. And it's a very good opportunity because you have to write your literature review for your thesis. Now, if you take advantage of that experience that you can convert the literature review into a review paper and actually publish them. So maybe in the future, uh, we can discuss it if we have time about writing review paper. But today I will concentrate mainly, or in this uh, program, we will concentrate mainly on this uh, full length scientific paper, basically. So you have seen that your work is good enough to write a paper, you have decided to write a paper. Now you have started writing a paper, even before you start writing a paper, you should try to find a journal, a target journal. Otherwise, you will be moving around aimlessly without much output. So it is very important that you do not gamble. You don't have the habit of sending your paper to one journal, they publish it, then you send it, and then you send it another one and go on. So this kind of uh, effort is fruitless. So the suggestion is, please do some work. What are the journals which are suitable for your work? And we will discuss that in detail later on. Uh, and of course, your supervisor will be helping you a lot. And then target the journal, write your paper to fit into the context and the format of that particular journal. So this is a more efficient way of doing this. And how do you know which journal is suitable? There are few ways to do that. So once you write your draft, you have written down a list of journal papers that you have cited in your paper. Now, by looking at the list, you will notice that there are one or two or few journals where you have cited a number of references. So if that is the case, so probably those journals where you've cited multiple references from, those could be your target journal. So it's a good practice as well when you select a few target journals, you go through the index or, or the table of contents of that journal and see how your journal, your, your content, the content of your paper will fit into that. So by doing this a little bit of homework, so you will be working much more efficiently. And of course, the guide for authors will be there for each journal. There will be, there is a guide for authors and you have to read them, read them very carefully, uh, multiple times, not just once, in order to understand what is the scope, what is the mechanics, what is the process and so on. So this will help you uh, to, to submit it in an efficient way to the right journal. Now I have a quiz for you. So what is the typical full length research paper? Uh, what is the length of a full length research paper in terms of manuscript pages? A, B and C, which one is correct? C. C, C. Okay, so all of you are not sleeping that I can see. Thank you very much. Let's proceed. So the introduction is done. I will just give you some, a little bit of tips. Uh, many of you already know this, but it's important to emphasize those because writing is so important. 
and so critical and complex, so it's not easy. I know there are a few God-gifted individuals who write very well, so writing comes to their pen easily. But most of us are not in that category. I find it personally very difficult to write. It's not easy. I have to spend a lot of time. And I, I know that many of us in this category, we have to put efforts to, uh, to make, uh, to have, create a good writing. So what are the tips for good writing? So to highlight once again, writing is a highly intellectually taxing activity. And this kind of situation will arise very often. If you face this, not to worry, you are not alone. If you are in this situation, tell yourself that this is only simple, only normal, and I have to overcome this. And the first thing that you have to do is to know your own style. All of us are highly, highly individual in nature when it comes to writing. We have our own style and none of us have the same style when it comes to writing ability. So you need to know your own style. Some of us, personally for me, all people, I love to use literally pencil and paper to write. But of course, uh, uh, modern people like you, you would love to use computer, I probably. Uh, your keyboard, that is fine, whatever it is, uh, you know what is your own style. And time is also important. What part of the day you should start writing, what place you should start writing at. So these are all very important. Once you know this, then you start writing. And when you write, just put something down on your paper or, or on your laptop. Don't worry about whether these are correct or not. Otherwise, you will be very, very uh, slow. So you just write something down. Edit, you have to do it later. Never ever do editing when you are writing. Never do that. And when you write something, uh, sometimes the general argument comes to mind, to our mind first. So put them down. Don't worry about the details. So in the second revision, you can always put down the details. And know yourself when your energy is high. Some of us have energy uh, in the very early morning. If that is the case with you, do the writing in the early morning. Some of us has energy, high energy, after 12 a.m. midnight. And if that is the case with you, so, Use that time for your writing because writing is an intensive activity. And also when it comes to writing a paper, don't make it open-ended. Create a timetable, schedule for yourself, set a deadline that I want to finish this paper in one month time, in six weeks time. So without this, you, it will linger and linger. It will become endless. And to know your style, I will show you some styles. You may pick up your own style or you can create your own. Just see which one you like. If you ask me my favorite, so of course, this one is my favorite. If you don't know your style, then you will be end up in this situation. And your writing productivity will be really very low. And you need to concentrate. I think I have some issues, okay. And it's uh, advisable that when it comes to writing, you keep a long period of time for this writing. And you sit in a place which is boring, but there is nothing there to distract you, to distract your attention. You have full 
focus on what you are doing. So you uh, switch off everything and then just do the writing. Because when you do start writing, you will feel that everything else, every other activities is better than writing. And you tend to do all other activities. And at the end of the day, your writing output is next to nothing. So remember this, writing is not easy. So if I ask one of you, have you ever thought of the best condition where you become most productive in your writing? Any one of you? If you don't answer me, then I'll ask you. So what do you Sir, think? Yes, please. Uh, it is in the morning uh, that I have the most favorable conditions. So you, you prefer writing in the morning? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, before breakfast or after breakfast? Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, yes, my, my question was, uh, is it before breakfast or after breakfast? Uh, sir, I guess after breakfast uh, will be better okay. for me. Okay. So I'm asking this question because some things, these are the details, but these are important because I, I know a, a professor of mine, a teacher, and he used to write uh, very early in the morning. He would wake up at four o'clock and then pray, and then he will write at a stretch two, three hours without any disturbance. So everybody is sleeping. So he would do his writing job, and then he would take breakfast and do, and come to the university. Anyway, so uh, please uh, find your own time and make sure that you become productive at this stage. Uh, can, can you see my slide now? Or do, do I have to share again? Yes, sir, we can yeah. see. So once you decide to write your paper, uh, obviously what is assumed is that you already have done the experiments, you have analyzed your research results, you have some idea about the findings, the important findings that you have. So before you start writing, you should consolidate those ideas and try to see what are the main points that you want the audience to get from your work. It is not an easy task, I tell you. It's difficult, but it's very important that at the early stage, you start thinking about the main points, which we call the central message of your paper. And once you have write, written down those in the form of a couple of sentences, for instance, or a few central points, then tell it to your fellow students, to your supervisor. Tell them that this is what I want to say out of the work that I have done. What do you think? So this will help you to clarify your thinking process because writing is actually thinking. So we have to uh, realize this. So if your thinking is not clear, then your writing will not be clear. So please make it a habit that instead of starting writing your paper, you better think about, uh, reflect uh, on your own results and then come up with these main messages or, or main conclusions that you get out of your papers. And of course, we have to do it in an ethical way, in a logical way. And once you have found out, then you have to write the whole paper in a way that will support these main messages. So in this way, your communication becomes effective, becomes uh, more efficient. So readers will be able to understand your paper in an easy manner. 
So the first thing you do, don't start writing. You write the table of contents. So introduction, under the introduction, you write in point form the description of what you want to tell in the description, in, in the introduction. And the same goes for all other sections. And once you have written down this table of contents, it could be one and one half, one and a half pages, then consult this with your supervisor or your colleague. And then you will find that there are some unnecessary things that you have introduced. You can take them out, or you will find that there are some important things that you have missed out, so you include them. And once this table of content is ready, it will be a guide for you, a map, roadmap for you. And you use this to write the whole manuscript, piece by piece. So you don't have to write the whole manuscript at a time. It's, it's difficult, it's not easy. But your table of content will help you to guide. And for a section like your results and discussion, so you collect all the data, you collect all the figures, you plot them in different ways, and then put them in big tables and see how they make sense, how they are linked to each other, and so on. And from there, you will be able to find out the main theme. You come up with the main words, and then use those main keywords and explain them in paragraph form, and in that way, you write your own, your own manuscript. And it always helps if you give oral presentation because oral presentation will help you to get your ideas clear. It will help you to make a story out of your, your own work. And those kind of stories will be easier for the readers to understand. So for writing your papers, it is highly advisable that you prepare the outline, you prepare the main message, and then you tell it to others, get the feedback, and then start writing. I already mentioned that when you write, you write quickly without editing. But of course, before you do that, you consolidate all the information. And when you write, keep up the flow. And if you feel that it's difficult for you to progress on one section, then don't spend too much time on it. Switch over to a different section, which you find easier to write at that time. So in that way, you make your time in a more efficient manner. And write in part. So when you decide to write a paper, don't think about the paper. You think about the paper part by part and use this technique, what we call divide and conquer. So you think about just the introduction, you think about the methods, or you think about a part of the discussion, and then you finish them. We have to use language which is as simple as possible. And remember ABC, which means that our language must be accurate. We must be very brief and the language must be very clear. And this can only be achieved when we write the first draft, put it aside for a few days and then revise and re-revise and re revise So revision is of fundamental importance when it comes to good writing. I think for the sake of time, I'll just quickly go through this. So the best practice is when you are carrying out your experiment, start writing your paper. Don't wait till the experiment is done, till your lab work is done. Don't wait for this. Because you will realize that when you start writing, you will find that there are a lot of loopholes in your experimental design. You may need to repeat some of the experiments. So when you do the paper writing, uh, you will review your own results and those gaps will become apparent and that helps you in the research process. And which part of the research of paper I have to write? The rule of thumb is 
we start with some section which is the most easy to write. And for many of us, methodology is the easiest section because it's just the description of what we have done. And normally the suggestion is that you first write down that methodology because once you have written, you are happy that you already achieved something. And then you start thinking about results. You write the results, you write the discussion and you write the conclusion. And then you write the introduction and you write the abstract as the last unit and you finalize the title. Of course, uh, this is not so linear. Sometimes while writing your results, you will find that you have some idea about the title. So don't lose those ideas. You put it somewhere. And then when it comes to the finalizing the title at the end, so you can use those ideas. So don't lose anything. And you should start writing or practice writing from today, because this is very important. And it helps if you can start with a timetable. So we call this GAN chart, where you put the list down all the activities related to your paper, and then you fix how many weeks you need, and then you record all the activities and then monitor how you are doing. And of course, in your uh, list of activities, the first draft is not enough. You can, cannot just throw your first draft on the face of your supervisor, because you have to go through this first draft, second draft, third draft, or probably you ask your friend to review, and you, of course, you have to review their manuscripts as well. So it's a mutually uh, beneficial process. And then before you submit to the supervisor, you have to make sure that it has got uh, some substance in there. And your manuscripts will be attractive when the readers can easily grasp it, easily read it. So readability is so very important. And it needs dedication and hard work. There is no alternative to that, I can tell you. And before I uh, stop, I think uh, let me just show you the scenario. When you publish a paper, these are the facts. So the readers, researchers like you, they will go through the journal. So they will read through the contents. 90% of them will read the contents. And then 5% will open the journal and go through the titles. Less than 2% will read only the abstract and introduction. And less than 1% will read the rest of the paper. So it's a highly, highly competitive space. And we as a researcher must make sure that we are within this 1%. Otherwise, all our efforts will be fruitless. So our writing should be so easy, so clear, that we attract the maximum readership. To summarize, so scientific paper is the first report of the research result that we have generated. And this is a part of our research. So if we feel that we will do research after we finish our, uh, we will write papers after we finish research, then that is not the right approach. It's not post-research activity. It is research activity. And as researcher, as academics, so we have to publish. Without publication, we cannot flourish. We cannot progress. And the most Format, which is very simple, all of us know. And there are a few types of papers, journal papers. So one of them is the full length paper. Another one is short communication or letters or rapid communication, and then review papers. As for the tips, so my suggestion is that you gather all the data, analyze them, and then Start with the central message first before you write the paper. 
and then give oral presentation to your supervisor, to your fellow students, get their feedback, and then make improvement on your thinking process. And then you start writing. When you write something, just write down. Don't worry about editing at this stage. And don't think about the whole papers because then it will be a daunting task. You'll find it very, very difficult. So divide them into parts and think about one part at a time. Part of introduction or methodology or first part of your result or the third part of your result. So think in those terms and it's easy to tackle them. Write it down when your energy is high. So don't, you will not be productive when you are very, very tired. So you have to find the right time and right place. And always set a deadline. And revision is writing. Without revision, I'm from it. So I think uh, I'm done with this. And by listening my talk, you cannot be a good writer. That much I can tell you. It is only through practice that you become a good writer. Probably some of the tips can help you. But you have to do it yourself. There is no other alternative. So the earlier you start, the better. And a famous philosopher, Chinese philosopher, so look at his, uh, what he says. When I hear something, I forget. When I see something, then I remember it. I only understand something when I do it. So please start doing the writing from now on. From tomorrow, you'll start doing writing piece by piece, bit by bit. And when you do anything in research, always remember this. In the university, we must strive for excellence, which means that we have to put our best effort